Happy St. Patrick's Day. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. It's a rainy Friday, St. Patrick's Day. Normally, um, if I was working downtown, I would be probably out, going out to the bars. Uh, but I live outside the city, so I'm just going to stay home today and have some green beer maybe. Um, and I'm going to do a sketchbook tour, but I just wanted to hop on and say good morning. And yeah, I hope you enjoy. I have to show I'm wearing my Guinness shirt that I got at the Guinness... Um, factory when we went to Dublin earlier well last year last summer so my mom bought me some coffee this morning I have a Tim Hortons um, roll up the rim which is kind of disappointing because you can't actually roll up the rim anymore it's all in the app so we didn't win this morning and I have to share I got a new tree for my office I'm not quite happy with the plant stand I might get something different there's one I have my eye on and then I have a new chair coming for this corner. So my office is slowly, slowly coming together. So anyways, let's get started with the video. I am really excited to share a sketchbook tour with you today. I finished my very first Etcher watercolor book. Um, this one is the A5 size, I believe. Eight by six. It's about that size. Anyways, I'm really excited to share this book with you. Um, it took me a while to finish this and this book, I really wanted the Etcher sketchbooks for a while, and I received this as a Christmas gift last year from my mom, and I was scared to use it because it's so precious, because they're so expensive. She bought this from the Etcher website, and so you had to buy the three pack, it's like over $100, and it's a thing. So using this book, I was so nervous when I got it, and it took me a year to fill it, but after about halfway through, I just decided to... Uh, not worry about it and not stress out as much and just dive in and just make art and if it was bad just keep going and if it was great then accept the win. This is probably going to be a bit of a longer video so if you want to get a tea or just settle in or maybe have this on in the background uh, while you're painting or whatever that's cool too. Uh, but let's take a look at my drawings. So very very stressful this was the very first page of my art book or my journal and so I drew these three seagulls, which are part of like a meme or an image on the internet. And they all look like they're having this crazy conversation where they're, I don't know, hen pecking or something. And so it reminds me of me and my mom and my sister when we get together and we just gab like crazy. So um, yeah, that was my first uh, sketch. I was so nervous to do this painting and I was really happy with how it turned out. And then I did a journal entry here. This is of our bird feeder. So I had put a finch feeder in the window and trying to get back the goldfinches that we used to have when I was younger. Wasn't really happy with my bird. I was really happy with how the translucency of the bird feeder came out. And I liked my little sketches of the sunflower seeds. And then here is just a composition of a few images of the birds that visited our feeder that winter. We had a lot of purple finches and goldfinches. And so they would kind of sit on the top of the bird feeder. This one, you just see the butt view because he's got his head stuck in the feeder. This one's kind of peeking out like he's saying hello. And this one was hanging upside down on the hook as well, which I thought was cute. So just some practice here drawing the birds in different positions than a typical three quarter view or whatever you're used to seeing. Uh, that most bird pictures look like. At this point, I was planning a trip to Dublin with my mom uh, to Ireland, and so I decided just to paint some images of Ireland and things that I felt were um, reminiscent of Ireland. Uh, after I came back and I looked at this painting, I felt that a lot of this was accurate. Potatoes are such a thing there, and I love potatoes, and they were so good. Guinness, we went to the Guinness factory, and I think that was one of my favorite things that we did. I'm sure... People who live in Ireland think that visiting the Guinness factory is like very commercial, but it was just well done. Uh, the historic part of it, walking through the museum, it was ginormous and it was so cool. At the end, uh, we went up to the top of the factory and got a Guinness brew. We had our picture put on the top and we had the 360 panoramic views of Dublin. Oh, it was just gorgeous. It was so, so nice. And we went in the evening too, like we were right there before it closed. And so there was kind of like a sunset over the city. It was so pretty. And the Dublin, or not Dublin, the Irish flag uh, with green and white and orange, which is very nice. Oh, and also uh, it's, uh, Temple Bar, I think this is called. This is like the quintessential picture that you always see whenever um, you see Dublin or things of Ireland. 
this, uh, we saw this bar. We didn't go there because it is like a very touristy area. We went to the oldest pub in Ireland, which is the, the Brazen Head. And it was so cool because after we went there, we had seen um, all these celebrities who had went there. And Garth Brooks was one of them. And there was just a bunch. It was just, it was really cool. And I had my very first Guinness stew there. And ah, it was so good. It was so, so good. This is one of my favorite pages in my journal. Uh, just some random things from around the house. Uh, these are the birding binoculars I was using to watch the birds that winter in the feeder. And this is our cat Sabrina having some cat grass. Um, I put some in the planter that's on our coffee table in the living room so she can have her own little cat grass in the winter. And this is a view of one of the birds that visited that was a nuthatch. And we don't have many nuthatches around here. They're uh, white-breasted nuthatch, but I think we have one or two that frequent our bird feeders. And so they're always hanging upside down on the brick on our house, which they look so cool. I painted this um, in retrospect to uh, just recognize what was going on in Ukraine and the terrible tragedies that were happening there and still continue to happen. Um, and this was just a personal piece. I was feeling very emotional about what was going on. I tried to do the background as the Ukraine flag colors, but also kind of like a sunrise. And then they have the sunflower as their um, kind of representation of their country as well. So this was completely just a, a tribute to them and what was happening to them. For this painting, I decided to do something a little bit different and do kind of a silhouette with the painting recessed in a second layer within the image. And so I chose this Tory gate, um, they're this crimson Tory gate from uh, Japan from a, a photo that I had found. And these were spring sakura, but I just left them as a silhouette and a sketch. I, I like the way this turned out, but I probably could do it differently or would do it differently next time. Maybe more detail in the sakura area, just keeping it um, in black and white, but more visual, I guess, less silhouette. This was just a journal of some things I bought for my trip to Ireland. I got a new raincoat, uh, a pink one, which is really pretty. Love it very much. Uh, and I got some new running shoes uh, for the trip as well. So I would be comfortable walking around. And if you are planning a trip to Ireland, do not pack shorts. You just do not need them. I packed everything just in case because I wasn't sure the weather. We were going in June when it's warm, but it's supposed to not be warm in Ireland or as warm. And jeans every day and t-shirts or pullovers or something like that was adequate in June. And it wasn't terribly cold, but it wasn't to the point where I'd be wearing shorts. These are some more sketches just from my daily journal. Uh, this was a, a view of the uh, produce section at Walmart. We had just been there and they had like their peppers, red peppers and green peppers and stuff. And it just looks so pretty. I might have not captured it as great. I feel like the study was good for the shadows and depth and creating that kind of idea. But um, yeah, like the, the vegetables, the produce looked amazing. Uh, so I just snapped a picture of it. And then after I came home, I put the grocery bags on the step. And Sabrina, our cat, likes to sit on the other side of the railing of our deck. And so I snapped this picture of her with the groceries. And then I like this page as well. So on Mother's Day, um, we have a little shop up the road from us. Um, it is run by a family on their farm or on their, like on their property. And so they're only open on weekends. They have this tiny little hut and inside they have coffees and teas and, uh, baked goods and lunch. You can get like some homemade soups and tea biscuits and stuff. It, oh, it's so nice. And so we went up there for Mother's Day, uh, with my sister and my mom. And um, we got to meet their little dog, Millie, which was so sh sweet. She was an older dog and she was so lovely. And then this is just the view of the coffee table. We sat outside so they have little seating areas and uh, they had these um, lavender uh, plants on the table. And then we got a cookie and that was our coffee there. So I have some lilac bushes on my property. So my mom came over one day and went and picked some. They're my favorite flower. And so she surprised me and put a a bouquet on the table and so I decided to sketch that and just in the glass vase. I was really happy with the way the translucency came through with the glass vase as well. I felt that it looked kind of true to the one that was on the in the picture or on the table. I don't know, painting glass is really hard so whenever I have anything that sort of looks like it, it's, it's a giant win. In this painting we went to um, visit my aunt for the weekend. She has a cottage and a camper uh, trailer and so when we woke up in the morning, there were all these Canada geese 
all over the yard in front of the trailer. They were all the little babies. And so I grabbed a picture and uh, did a painting of that. They were so cute to see. And these are some sketches from our weekend with uh, visiting my aunt and my uncle. So we played Scrabble and saw a Baltimore Oriole, which I don't ever remember seeing one that I could note. So I added that to my bird list of lifers, which was cool. And saw an Eastern Kingbird as well, which was really neat. So this is the start of our trip to Ireland. Um, I did this sketch as kind of like an intro page to the next series of sketches that were supposed to be my travel journal. And so I thought it would be neat to um, document all the places that we went around Ireland. I had put this as a trip to Dublin, but after I made it, I realized it should have said Ireland because we went to the country. We didn't just visit one city. We visited a lot of cities. It was so beautiful, by the way. I totally recommend going to Ireland if you haven't. It's so lovely. Everyone is so, so nice there. Food is amazing. Yeah, super, super great time. So this was a sketch I did in the uh, airport. And so we went to the bar at the airport just waiting to board our flight. We had a really late overnight flight, uh, caught a red eye. So I sketched the bar and then the little the drink that I got. Um when we got on the plane. So we sat on in club class. We were in the first row of the plane. I love, <laughs> I love club class. I love being pampered. Who doesn't? I mean, it was a luxury. We were very excited. We got great deal on this in the seats because it was right where um, COVID restrictions were still locked down, but airlines were starting to broaden out their schedules. And so they were trying to get more passengers and so we got i think we upgraded our tickets for a couple hundred bucks to club class it was something really crazy cheap and so we got lucky and got um seats there and back in first class basically and when we flew it was actually a lot more expensive so we were lucky to get that deal we did take the chance that you know maybe we wouldn't be able to go because of restrictions but by the time we did fly everything opened up and it worked out so it was a good risk to take i guess and here I'm just starting on my birds for Avian August. I did this uh, challenge last year. I did like a whole bunch of mini sketches. And so this year I decided to do like two birds to a spread. And these are just some birds. I'll go through each of these just to have a quick look. Uh, I really like the way the water turned out here along this grab. And then this little penguin here I thought was really cute too. And I loved how this um, azure tit turned out. I just thought that the wings and drawing all these little feathers was so complicating, but uh, or complicated, but they turned it pretty good. This guy is just crazy, and he's such an odd looking bird, this spoonbill, and I don't know, he just was fun to draw. Very complicated again, he has all those feathers. Uh, doing those details is, is a lot of work. <laughs> and then some more of the birds from Avian August. In this one, I went across the two pages, which I don't normally do, and I was Impressed at how the sketchbook held up that the strings were able to take on the color, the watercolor, so you don't notice the seam that bad. It doesn't stand out that bad. So I was able to squeeze three birds out of this strip. And then as I got more confident, you can see my birds get larger. And because I was drawing every day, I find that even if I take a break and I'm really apprehensive with my art, if I, if I just stick at it every day, after a few days, uh, I loosen up for sure and get my confidence back really like the way this red crowned crane turned out. This was a popular image uh, on my social, on my Instagram. That one was very popular. I love the way the barn owl turned out as well. And then this crazy bird of paradise, which is got this crazy get up when he probably is in some sort of flight or fight mode, <laughs> I think. Uh, but that was fun to draw. Pretty unique. And then just some of the other birds. I liked this one because it was a different pose that's not typical, so that was um, exciting to do as well. There's a look at a few more birds. The Arctic Turn is actually a sticker in my Etsy shop, and it's a holographic sticker, so you can pick that up if you're interested. I'll have a link below in the description. And I like the colors of this Sulfur Crested Cockatoo. When I painted this, I was doing more like blends. The colors, I was letting them be more free with the way that they were mixing together. And I feel like this just created some really nice gradients that I just haven't or haven't been achieving up to this point. So this was inspiration for the next few paintings that I did. And some more of the birds, just to look here. Lots of fun. I always enjoy painting the birds. They're my favorite. 
And then the last two birds here, the jungle fowl rooster, I guess, and the albino ringneck dove. And there was birdtober. I did some drawings, but at this point I was pretty burnt out. Um, not on birds, but just painting in general. I just have I just, you go through, I think, peaks and valleys where you're you're really inspired and you want to paint or draw all the time, and then other times you just need to recharge your batteries. I think at this point, I was just in the recharge my batteries phase, and I wasn't feeling it, so my drawings weren't really that great in this part. Um, I did capture this dog, though, so at my mom's, um, in her backyard, her neighbor, their huskies weren't, the people weren't home, but the husky got stuck in the blinds because the window was open, and he was losing his mind, and so... Huskies are super panicky. If <laughs> like something's wrong, they always push the panic button. So it was pretty funny. The dog, they came home right after and the dog was rescued. There was no harm done, but um, it was pretty funny. And the dog uh, made it to like our Facebook page for our town. Someone was like, oh my gosh, who owns this dog? It's freaking out. And then, yeah, no, it, it, the dog was fine. But um, it was quite the interesting drama for the day. So I wanted to capture that in my journal. And this one, I was just messing around with some things. I had seen um, some drawings that inspired me to try to do some icons and stuff. I don't really like how these turned out, but again, the process, it's all, you know, you have some wins and some losses and it's all contributes to growth, I think, in the end. Uh, for here, I wanted to capture this. This happened on Christmas Day. So this dove landed in the window. Um, on Christmas Day. My grandma passed this past year um, just before Christmas, a few months before Christmas. And so we were, it was a really heavy hearted time for us, me and my grandpa. And we had this dove appear in the window on Christmas Day. And so I didn't really think anything of it. And then later that day, um, I was on Facebook and a friend who also lost their grandmother the month before also had a dove in her window on Christmas Day and posted about it. So that just totally made a big connection um, in my mind and I messaged her and discussed it and we talked about it and so I wanted to document that because it became this special thing that did happen. I I can't even, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot to talk about but it was an, it was a nice memory and so it felt like, you know, maybe my grandma was with us that day and, and we were thinking of her so maybe she was thinking of us. I also drew um, a cardinal from our bird feeder. We have um, a bird buddy, which is a, a bird feeder with a camera. And so the cardinal visited and we never got cardinals ever. And they started appearing this year. We normally would get cardinals like once a year, maybe once every two years, we'd see one. That's it. They never came to our feeder. They were my grandma's favorite bird. And this, these cardinals have started coming and I see them every single day. I feed the birds. Um, and they're always in the tree outside my office window. Uh, there's a male and a female. I think there's two couples now that frequent. And that's pretty special. So I wanted to capture that memory also. I also, um, instead of using the typical Lamy ink, the sketch ink that I use, I used a Pentel Pit Artist brush pen in this cranberry color just to try different outline colors to, to see what the effect looked like and how it made the feel or tone of the um, drawing look different. In these sketches, this is a little bit forward. This is just before the new year. So on my Christmas break, I started trying to do sketches that didn't have a lot of heavy outlines. So I wanted to try doing some where it was mostly just the painting and less of the sketch outlines that I use for my journaling. Overall, I'm okay satisfied with the painting. This one I think came out better. And so this was actually a bird challenge in January. Uh, this was Burb Fest that I did. So this was the first painting, or actually the second painting. Um, so I did some of the gradients that I talked about in that previous drawing where it inspired um, doing more blends and being more generous with the paint mixing together in a base layer. And I really like how this turned out. Um, so this was another bird I did for Burb Fest. I'm really happy with how the moss and the tree came out. Not so much the bird, but yeah. I tried something different here again, doing the kind of the silhouette sketch outline. I was trying to do more detail here, but I wasn't quite sure what to do with the shading and the cross hatching. So I kind of left it a silhouette. Yeah, I'm happy with the, the duck the way it turned out and I love the background, the water. Uh, I probably would have painted this in on retrospect, 
These are some of my more traditional birds. This one I try to go very light with the outlines, but I did get carried away. This again, trying to do that sketch that I was talking about, and I'm not really crazy about how that turned out. This one I love, the long-tailed tit. I think this one came out really nice. Um, the exploring shadows and kind of tones in the branches that I'm really happy with and considering shadows was a big one um, in this kind of series is what I was thinking about in the back of my mind while I was working on Burb Fest. I have some details in the face with some sketch ink, but not anywhere else. And I think that helped kind of elevate or give a little bit more focus um, in the face area at least, some more detail. This bird, I really love the background colors and the way it turned out. Uh, trying to be light with the sketches, but again, got a little bit carried away. I think it's a little heavier than I'd like. It's really hard to break old habits, but that's kind of what I was working on. With this one here, this is the same idea, so trying to be light with my sketches, or my outlines, I guess, and letting the colors kind of carry the painting more so than the outlines. And I'm pretty happy with how this came out. I thought the gradients worked out really nice. And then the lines that just emphasize the deepest part of the shadows, I think make, I think it looks better this way. This bird I love, I love, love, love. This one, I just like the way that the gradients happen, especially in these blue areas that they suggest highlights and form in a very subtle way. And it's not overly complicated or complex. There's light line work, uh, inking in the eye area, a little bit of detail in the uh, beak, just to give that uh, definition and depth that it needs, I think. And just, I left everything else sketchy. I believe with the outlines, I use like a watercolor pencil or a pencil crayon just to give a little bit of a darker line that's not pencil, because pencil I find is just too light. But I love how that one turned out. This one here, I'm not so crazy about the bird. I think he could use a little bit better form um, and depth, like dimension, but I really love how the shadow came out on the branch. I feel like the light really is um, easy to read here. Like it really does depict sunlight. It feels like it is a true shadow. It's probably the best shadow I've ever made. I love, love the shadow on this branch. And then again, here's another one of my birds from Burb Fest and just enjoying the colors and the blends and trying to be more cognizant of the outlines that I'm doing. And yeah, just trying to make the colors, uh, be a little more free with the colors, I guess. My zebra finch turned out really well. I'm really happy with him. I love doing the details in the lines here without actually using a pen to do those details. So all of the black line work in this area are all done with watercolor, which I'm really, really excited with how that turned out. This is um, one of the better birds, I think, of Burb Fest for me. And again, just some more birds from Burb Fest, uh, really liking the colors and the blends that are coming out of this. And we have this guy here too. The form could have been a little better. This was a very pretty bird, but Sometimes when there's a lot of colors, it's harder to capture in real life. You would think painting a colorful bird would be easier, but for me it's not. I like doing like the brown ones and the basic ones. Uh, this owl here I decided to do in a dark setting. And I really love using the indigo from Windsor & Newton for these backgrounds, just to make um, it look like a nighttime painting instead of just typical day. And then these birds here are pretty funny. Love this osprey and had fun painting this bird as well, working on shadows again, considering where the shadows would be, just to give a bit more form and depth. And the last painting, which is my current um, avatar on Instagram, this guy turned out really nice. This is a Goldian, Goldian Finch, and I love the blends in this. I didn't do a lot of line work, just kept the ink for the eye, and I really love how this turned out. I love the background. I love how it creates this kind of sun background, and the blends, I love the little blends of the cheek, the highlights. I'm really, really happy as an ending page. I think it's turned out really good. So that's a look at my sketchbook. And this is, again, the Etcher one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified as I post more videos to my channel. And if you want to follow along with my artwork, um, you can find me on Instagram. I am Leanne Land Art on Instagram, and I'll put some links in the description below as well for all my socials and, and my Etsy shop and anything if you want to check those out. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.